Hey everybody, this is Captain Chris with Pocket Change Inshore Fish and Charters along with Chris Green and always together with my buddy Captain Anthony Corsella, the founder of Pocket Change Inshore Fish and Charters. What's going on? Not much. What are we talking about today over here with Chris Green and his custom rod we're, shop? We're talking about custom rods that you could get made any way you want them. That's what we're talking about All right. Today. Well, that sounds good. Mr. Green. My turn. What is the most important thing when somebody comes to you? What's the most important thing you need to know when they're going to come to you for a custom rod? What's the first question? Uh, what are you going to use it for? Okay. But more than anything else, it's sizing the rod for the person's specific fishing type they're trying to, or maybe try to make it where it's a dual purpose, trout, redfish, snook. So uh, that way it would reduce maybe how many custom fishing rods you would need. So what you're saying is, is you could have somebody come to you and you could possibly have a rod that may be good at a variety of things but not great at any one particular thing and you'd be able to use that rod in a variety of applications. Sure, absolutely. Or maybe a couple of those that are great at a few things and then instead of needing five or six custom rods you might only need two or three. Let's say we're just talking about flat fishing. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, also, when it comes to that, are you able to also talk to the client about what type of reel or what price range they're going to be in or weight so that, that whatever reel they're looking at is going to match weight-wise with the rod that you're going with? Right. I try to match the rod to what they're going to be doing. Uh, a question I typically ask is what pound test do you use? because most people uh, use braid, 90% of the people yep. today use braid, and they don't realize that, let's say that 20 pound braid, which is a common braid that people use, uh, it breaks at 40 pound test. So I really lean towards people using something a little bit lighter because you know there's always a chance that somebody could break the rod not knowing how strong that braided line is. So if you're used to fishing with monofilament, just uh, keep in mind that braid breaks much higher. So we may go down, plus you'll get more line on the reel and it'll cast farther. Just Got all it. the way around, the lighter braid is better. Got it. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, I know right now you're in the middle of, a, of building a custom rod for Captain Anthony. What did we, what did you guys go through? What was the process to go through to narrow down to this blank before we even started worrying about look? The first thing you would do is we would, may go inside the store, pick up several rods, and we'll put a reel on it just what he feels comfortable, how long the butt needs to be. I like to see the butt about two inches shy of the elbow, two to two and a half inches. So once we figure that out, then it lets me know what's available in that grip length that I have in stock. After that, it would be um, what kind of reel you're gonna use so we can pair the reel that matches the rod, the same pound class, and talk a little bit over the line we're gonna use. And then also what fish we're gonna target it for. If it's gonna be a rod for fishing mangroves or docks, I like to lean towards a little bit heavier of a rod, yep. just for mm -hmm. the purpose some people like to palm the reels for a split second to get the fish out of there, mm -hmm. and I just don't want no failures. Gotcha. Um, then as far as beautification, there's all kinds of different things you can do. Uh, you can pick the color thread to match the reel, um, right. and all of those all of those type things are things that you can then right. um, if adjusting. It's a, if it's pen, it's usually gold and black. If it's uh, Shimano, it could be uh, black and red or something like that because of the new reels coming out now or a black. Shimano's always leaning a little bit towards uh, red and black, but the new Vanford has got a little bit of a different color. That's, that's what, that's that's what one. this one's for right here, the Shimano Vanford. We're making it match. This will be my go-to trout rod where I'm throwing jigs. Um, super, super, super light rod, carbon fiber grips. Um, we've got some nice jewelry on here. It looks really good. Um, I can't wait till this rod is done, man. Right, and this rod's going to have a uh, black titanium guide, which is kind of a Absolutely. rare guide. Yeah, yep. So it helps save weight. Now, earlier I heard you mention uh, butt length, and you like two inches from the elbow. Right. Is that going to be any different versus if you were a wade fisherman or if you were a kayak fisherman? Would you want to use different measurements for them versus what you would use for someone who's from a boat? A kayak fisherman, generally, I make it where it's like more mid forearm. For the simple reason, if you're, you're always sitting down in a kayak and you're gonna be a Dean or a Spook or a soft plastic, you're constantly jerk, jerk, jerk. And then a lot of times the end of the butt will actually snag on your shirt. So there's a lot of places it can get away with, you know, bump. 
So I, I lean more towards the shorter one. So the and, short, okay. And in a way it's good because as you slide the reel seat down, the rod becomes actually, actually effective longer. The rod is longer because you slide everything down and actually cast farther. Yeah. So it works out a good combination to run short butt rods. Mm -hmm. Now another thing to consider, uh, Chris, is not only do you do custom rods, but you also do custom repair. So any, almost anything that can be fixed on a fishing rod, you can take care of it and match the guides for the most part, or depending on what type of repair, butts, yeah. things like that, you can take care of that? I have just about every guide in stock from most of the manufacturers and guide replacement, tip replacement, even if you step backwards and break the end of your rod off, I fix a lot of rear, rear of the rods that have the butts broke off of it. And if you should happen to break it in the middle, I could always put a furl on it and make it a two-piece rod rather than throw the rod away. One thing I can't fix, if you break eight or 10 inches off the end of the tip, the rod is junk, it's, it's not fixable. I've tried to fix them, not possible. So you hear that guys, if you break your rod, just don't break it eight to 10 inches off the top. Right. Break it somewhere down here so it can be repaired. And then come see Chris Green over here at St. Pete Fishing Outfitters for anything you need. Custom rods, custom rod repair, you name it. Get a hold of the man, the myth, the legend, Chris Green, my good buddy and good friend.